and I and I talk about. Blood uh, Fuck off, man. Fuck your camera. Fuck off, man. South side of what? <laughs> <laughs> Factory. Keep that going for DJ Rufio over there. <laughs> Thank y'all for coming to the show. I started doing uh, comedy at the Knitting Factory in 09. It started out kind of slow. I mean, we had some all right crowds in the beginning, but at about last year is when it kicked in and started being packed pretty much every week. And I like it because it's two blocks away and I get to have my friends come through and perform, and got a DJ, and people come through, and we hang out and do comedy and drink. When I drink, I'm able to be in the moment. When I smoke weed, I overanalyze the moment, which is not good to do while you're having sex. Like, if I'm drunk and having sex, I'm thinking, man, this is cool, I'm fucking right now. But if I'm high and I'm having sex, I'm thinking, man, why is she letting me do this to her? <laughs> oh, this is very different from one of my headlining gigs, because when I'm doing my headlining gig, People, for one, pay money, and it's I'm doing an hour show. So it's, uh, I was gonna talk about that actually here, because I, <laughs> I did all of these shows in Austin this weekend. I wanna say, y'all should see how polished and professional I am when I'm on the road. Because <laughs> here I'm very loose and I'm trying new stuff, I'm, 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 and I'm being more open about things and just being real, more experimental, because it's my, it's my regular spot. It's kind of my, like my comedy playground. Whereas when I'm on the road, it's about work and being just putting on a good show and just really build it. And here I do want to put on a good show, but I also have the other comedians that if I'm not doing too hot, I can just say, okay, I'll bring somebody up. Please welcome to the stage, Eric Andre, everybody. How you doing, man? Hello. Yo. Is that mic, how's that? Does it mic sound? Yeah, turn Does it, it mic up. sound turn nice? It up. Check, turn it what? Up. I thought you were going to play round of applause, whatever. Round of applause, something, something, ass clap. Something, 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 make that ass clap. Round of applause, something, something, ass clap. Something, 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 make that ass clap. Round of applause. That song is for strippers, man. <laughs> like, I, I, mean, I want to use 30 as a, as a benchmark to drink less. Uh, and, and smoke and, and, and like and, and eat better. It's not about the becoming an adult. It's more about uh, getting healthier. I did X uh, a couple weeks ago. Not a, it was about a month ago at, at a uh, SNL party. So one of my ex coworkers gave me one, and then it was cool. It wasn't a bad. It wasn't a bad trip at all. Who, who was it? Lauren Michaels. <laughs> Take this ecstasy, animal. <laughs> but no, then I took it, right? And I was fine, I was kicking it, I was talking with people, I was a better listener. <laughs> I was having a good time, I didn't feel, I felt good. But then I had been drinking a lot of water before because I had some spicy Thai food, and then I was waiting for the bathroom, and it was something about this batch of ecstasy that made me cool with just peeing on myself. <laughs> Not just peeing a little bit, like all of it. When did that happen? Huh? When did that happen? It was like a month or so ago. It was in New York? It was at the, yeah, at the SNL finale party. <laughs> and so, uh, what? and so I, I, I'm like, oh, fuck, I pissed on myself. But I was on X, so I was like, whatever, man, I'm gonna dance this shit dry, yo. <laughs> fuck that. The DJ during the show, sometimes he just, Maybe he might just chime in with a weird ass sound effect. Or sometimes we prepare bits, because I talk a lot about music. And so I was like, okay, since I'm talking about music, why don't I just have a DJ play the clips that I'm talking about? And that kind of brings the bit to life instead of me saying such and such said this. It's more like listen to this and then commenting on it. So I do, I do that. I did, I've done that in my road show a couple times and it works pretty well. So yeah, we'll prepare bits. I'll say, hey, pull this line from this song and pull this line and we'll do that. And then so, and it's a lot of fun too. I went to see uh, Young Jeezy's show in LA a couple months ago. Young Jeezy put on a good show. His show was tight. He didn't have a bunch of motherfuckers on stage with him. 
He only just, it was just him and one hype man and a DJ, which you which is surprising because Young Jeezy seemed like the type of dude that would have a lot of motherfuckers on stage with him. Uh, Jeezy put on a good show, right? But at one point, he just put on Kanye's "Niggas in Paris," and he just let that shit ride. He didn't have a remix to it. He just was like, "Yeah, this song is dope." <laughs> That's, that's, and I was like, you can't, why don't you have your own songs, man? You can't do that. You can't just let the song ride. Because I can't do that at my comedy shows. I can't be like, yo, yo, man, Chris Rock is hilarious, right? Let's listen to some Chris Rock shit. Like, now, we got a lot of things, a lot of racism going on in the world right now. Yeah. Who's more racist, black people or white people? Black people. You know why? Because we hate black people, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you don't like about black people. Black people really don't like about black people. Oh yeah, good There's point. There's shit going on with black people right now. It's like a civil war going on with black people. And there's two sides. It's black people and there's niggas. <laughs> and niggas have got to go. They have to tell black people. Oh, good observations, though. <laughs> uh, Pitchfork is in here filming. They're filming. So then we're going to use this moment for the website. We're going to put this part on here. Comedy, this is a host bringing his own show to a halt. Captured on three cameras.